Good afternoon from the garden. It's December 1st and uh, we thought that would be a wonderful moment to do another harvest video. Because we don't have a freezer, we're at this point in the year when we want to be self-sufficient. We either have to eat hardy vegetables that come fresh from the garden or vegetables that can be stored naturally. But even with these limitations, we are still enjoying a great variety. Yesterday I sat down to make a list of all the vegetables that we are still eating from the garden and I came to 19 and maybe I forgot some. So let's have a look. One of the staples of the winter garden, winter vegetable garden is kale. And um, like many other winter vegetables, it actually becomes sweeter after a couple of frosts. Uh, I have two varieties this year. This is the purple boar coal. And boar coal, the curly kale, is the most popular variety in the Netherlands. It's also one of the hardiest in my experience. And I have red Olympic, no, oh, sorry, Olympic red, which I grew last year. And I was really impressed with its performance, with its hardiness. And um, also it seems to be quite resistant to mildew. So the way I pick it is just uh, the outer leaves and then I let it regrow. And you can see that here our uh, new shoots start forming. And these small leaves I also like to pick like this and add them to mixed salads. Another one of the very hardy vegetables is leeks. So uh, it's a very important one for us. And we always grow lots of it because we can keep harvesting it from fall till the following spring, somewhere in March or April or even. I sow them quite early, usually in April and then in a seed bed. And then in uh, July, at the beginning of July, I replant them into the final position. Uh, we have two beds now and uh, I harvest a couple every week. I like to make, uh, add them to soups. Sometimes I make a leek soup, sometimes I just add it to a vegetable soup. And also we also like um, things like quiches. Uh, another thing, important thing on our sandy soil, which is not super nutritious, um, I use liquid comfrey, comfrey and nettle feed somewhere um, late in the summer to give them a, a little extra boost to get uh, a bit bigger plants like this one. We're also still harvesting some carrots for my double raised carrot bed that I showed you in uh, previous videos. Um, we made it double raised to avoid a uh, carrot fly, which flies really low, but it has worked a little, not 100%, but the carrots here have less carrot fly damage than uh, elsewhere in the garden. Um, we sowed these in March, I think, and started harvesting in June, but I um, harvest by thinning and leave other carrots grow bigger. So the ones left here are quite large. Oh, this is not the biggest one. We have probably... Oh, no, I'm not really getting the really large ones. Oh, but these look good. Not much care fly damage, looks like. That's a quite normal sized carrot. <laughs> oh. Then there are some less, a little less hardy vegetables like Florence fennel. Um, and this is a vegetable that I struggle with growing, frankly. Uh, a lot of the, uh, times they bolt prematurely and we don't get many large bulbs. But there are a few, like this one. This is a decent one. And if you uh, don't pull it up, but harvest uh, and leave the root inside, then you might get some extra shoots, smaller ones. This is a nice one. But a lot of them are bolted, like this one. Well, let's pull it up. Yeah. But still usable, good for soup. Like last year, I also made a, la a late sowing of oriental radishes. Shunkyo uh, was our favorite last time, so this is that's the one I sowed. 
but I sold them later, at least a month later than last year, and they never got as big. But there are still some usable ones. We also still have some beetroot and well these will not these should not stay in the ground much longer but they can have some light for us so I'll be harvesting most of these and I like to either roast them in the oven or I also make a salad with grated beetroot um, grated carrots and grated apples it's really good From our polyculture bed we're still harvesting parsnips and these are super hardy so they can be left in the ground and harvested throughout the winter as we need them. Uh, I really like the, the sweetish uh, taste of any seed like taste of parsnips but unfortunately it's not the most favorite vegetable of my kids. But there are more things that we pick here. There's still chard and chicory and parsley and I always harvest a big bunch of parsley to have on hand. At the back of the garden we're growing another root vegetable, a more unusual one. It's a yakon. Uh, yakon? I'm, I'm not sure how to pronounce it, sorry. Um, it's a, but it's a tuber which is related to dahlias and Jerusalem artichokes. We only have three plants this year and I already harvested one and that gave us a really huge harvest it was about seven kilo so uh, i'm curious uh, how much this one will be i have to loosen it and then uh, i will pull up the plant oh, look at that they really look like dahlias and uh, which are actually also uh, which actually are also edible So, and they can be stored well. There are two kinds of uh, bulbs, tubers, and one that these you can save for planting next year. And these we will eat. And the tubers are, if you, if you have not grown them before, if you have not tasted them, they're super juicy, uh, very crunchy. My kids like them raw. And that's how we usually eat them. Unfortunately, just like Jerusalem artichokes, they can induce flatulence. There are also still some hardy salad plants that we can harvest for winter salads. And one of my favorites is winter purslane, this one. And there are several reasons that it's my favorite, one of my favorites. Uh, and one of it is its mild taste because many of the hardy uh, uh, salad plants have quite strong taste. This one is mild and you can use it in bulk. Uh, you can cut it repeatedly, let it regrow. It's super hardy, it will just uh, grow all winter. And also it self sows so I only sow sowed it once and that was uh, more than 10 years ago. It just keeps coming back. And then there's the greenhouse, uh, which I had high hopes for when it comes to winter production. But like I said in my previous video about the greenhouse, um, this is our first year and we're still pretty much trying to figure out what are the best vegetables to grow here and most importantly, what are the best sowing times. So this year I'm trying a lot of different things. Um, many of the vegetables that you'll see here were sown on the last day of August and it seems that it's a little too late for some of them, for example the lattices. Also we had a lot of slug damage here, uh, which I tried to prevent by putting coffee, coffee grounds around the plants, uh, but some are quite badly damaged. But let's have a look. These carrots were sown at the beginning of um, September, so uh, we'll see when we will, <laughs> if and when we will have a harvest. Uh, next to them are peas that I sowed for pea shoots and these uh, we have already picked from and they're doing quite well. There's also a chart plant that I replanted from outside. Then there are some lettuces. This one is called quake 
uh, and it should be quite hardy. It seems to be doing well and also less damage by slugs than um, the other one, which is next to it. And that's a romaine variety called Rubens. Then there are spring onions, module sown, which are doing good, but probably could have been sown earlier. But, um, well, if we can't harvest them now, so uh, we'll wait for spring when they start growing again. Then we have chicory, Catalonia chicory, another chart plant, and landcress over there. And these plants are also replanted from outside and seem to be doing quite well. Then there are kales, which were badly damaged by the slugs and are doing, not doing well at all. Then we have some oriental brassicas, like tatsoi and pak choy, purple pak choy. And uh, these are fast growing, but unfortunately also they uh, were damaged by slugs before I put the coffee grounds around them. Then there's mibuna, one of my favorite oriental greens. This one, because it's quite mild and nice to eat raw as well. And then we have a um, leaf mustard called green in the snow, which is doing well. <laughs> the best, which is growing best. Um, and I'll be harvesting some of them. I'll be picking the outer leaves. It's a very hardy variety of mustard, uh, but they're also, they, the taste is quite hot. So I will probably um, saute the greens. So this looks like quite a big bunch, but they will cook down a lot. So this is today's harvest, but in addition to uh, these vegetables, we still have lots stored away. Like I said, we have different winter squash varieties. We have sweet potatoes. Uh, we have purple potatoes in the cellar. Uh, we have dried porcini, for example. We have dried herbs. Uh, we have some dried beans and corn. So it still feels real abundant and really easy to be self-sufficient. Like the previous time, I will be writing a blog post on my blog growntocook.com uh, about how we use these vegetables, what meals we make with them during the upcoming week. And when the blog post is finished, I'll put a link in, uh, in the description box uh, so you can check it out if you're interested. I hope you liked this video. Uh, please give it a thumbs up if you did. And let me know in the comments what you're still harvesting from your gardens. Happy gardening!